The movie begins on a tiny island with a young boy named Flint, who is presenting a science project. He demonstrates a spray that covers feet like shoes. He sprays it on himself, but when a student asks him how to remove it, he struggles to take it off, and the other students laugh at him. Feeling embarrassed, he quickly runs back to his home. At home, he continues to struggle with removing the shoes from his legs, but ends up falling. His parents try to comfort him, but he remains determined. His mother convinces him by expressing her belief in his potential to become a great scientist and change the world someday. She gives him a lab suit as a gift. Flint, overjoyed by his mother's gift and filled with motivation, rushes to his playroom to start creating new things once again. As Flint grows up, his mother passes away, and he continues to work on many great inventions, but his creations often cause problems for his father and the townspeople. His inventions tend to turn into disasters, setting him apart from the community and leaving him friendless. His only companion is a pet monkey named Steve. Flint had a dream in which his city faced a shortage of food, with only sardines available on the island. Determined to help his city, he embarked on a mission to invent a machine capable of transforming water into food. In his laboratory, he meticulously constructed the machine. As he activated the machine to test it, it became apparent that the machine required more power, ultimately overloading the house's electrical supply. As Flint worked to fix the house's electrical issues, he had an encounter with his father. His father, concerned about Flint's frequent disastrous inventions, advised him to abandon his inventing ambitions and opt for a more conventional career like everyone else. Despite his father's concerns, Flint was determined to become a famous scientist, but his father insisted that he work full-time at the family's tackle shop. Flint reluctantly began working at his father's shop. While working, he noticed on the TV that the city's mayor was preparing for a festival, and all the citizens were invited to celebrate. However, he was interrupted by Baby Brent, a famous man in the city who had grown up with Flint. He bragged about his own fame, and boasted that he would be the main attraction at the upcoming festival. He openly showed contempt for Flint's work, and leaving to attend the festival. With a newfound determination, Flint rushed to his lab and seized the food machine. He hurriedly made his way to a nearby power plant, intending to connect the machine to a more substantial power source. Meanwhile, the city's festival was in full swing, with all the citizens enjoying the festivities. A weather girl named Sam Sparks had arrived from New York to report on the event. As Flint connected the electrical supply to the machine, a city policeman noticed his actions and attempted to stop him. However, just as he activated the machine, it suddenly launched into the air carrying Flint with it. They soared through the town, disrupting the live recording of Sam's report and placing her in front of the live TV audience. Finally, the machine shooting up into the sky. The incident led to a glass bottle specially designed for the festival, losing its balance and rolling uncontrollably through the city, causing chaos. It smashed into the festival grounds, destroying the park that the town's mayor had envisioned. Ultimately, it landed on Flint, and he became the target of blame, seen as a troublemaker and a nuisance. Broken and despondent, he sat on the bench, contemplating his life. There, Flint noticed Sam Sparks the weather girl, who appeared equally shattered and disheartened, seemingly on the brink of abandoning her career. As she took a seat, she accidentally bumped into Flint, promptly apologized, and opened up about her discouragement regarding the day's events. They engaged in conversation, with Sam inquiring about his unique shoes, and Flint revealing that he had designed them himself. Sam was awestruck by his ingenuity, and a connection began to form between them. However, their conversation was abruptly interrupted when an unexpected object plummeted from the sky. To Flint's amazement, it turned out to be cheese, and as he gazed upward, he was struck with shock, as he witnessed a luminous cloud descending from above. This brilliantly colored cloud covered the city, leaving its citizens in awe and astonishment. To their collective delight, it began to rain cheeseburgers, prompting Flint to burst with joy, realizing that his invention was working perfectly. The entire city became captivated by this spectacular event, and seizing the moment, Sam commenced reporting this unbelievable phenomenon to the world revealing that Flint was the mastermind behind it. The citizens were taken aback by this revelation. While a police officer attempted to apprehend Flint, the townspeople and the town's mayor encircled him, fervently pleading for him to bring back the miraculous food rain again. Flint consented and invited Sam to accompany him to his laboratory. However, his father intervened, expressing concerns that it might lead to another disaster, as had happened before. Flint assured him that he had everything under control, and his father reluctantly agreed. Together, they entered the lab, 
where Flint swiftly connected an antenna to the machine and his computer to create a food-making apparatus. He placed an order for a breakfast of eggs and toast, and soon the city was filled with the aroma of freshly cooked food. The town's mayor approached Flint and struck a deal with him to keep the food machine running producing food for three meals a day. In return, he would be celebrated as the city's hero for his ingenious invention. Flint accepted the proposition. As a result, the city experienced a remarkable transformation, with its economy thriving and residents living contentedly. Flint became the most famous figure in town. Even the police officer, who had previously been critical, offered an apology and requested an ice cream run for his son's birthday. Initially hesitant, Flint eventually agreed. The city was filled with the delight of ice cream, bringing joy to everyone. Sam continued to report incidents, and invited the entire world to visit the amazing city. As Flint and Sam spent more time together, their bond grew stronger. Flint decided to surprise her by creating a house made entirely of jello. Sam was overjoyed, and the two of them spent quality time together. In a moment of vulnerability Sam shared her past with Flynn. She had always aspired to become a weather broadcaster, but she struggled with bullying from other students, which made her reluctant to wear her glasses, as she feared being labeled a nerd. Nevertheless, Flint offered unwavering support and reassured her, emphasizing her natural beauty without concealment. In the evening, Flint took his father out for dinner. Flint excitedly shared with him the news that the mayor had granted him the honor of cutting the ribbon for the grand opening of the town. He anticipated his father would be proud of him, but to his surprise, his father instead expressed concern over the agreement he had made with the town's mayor. Frustrated by the disagreement, Flint walked back home feeling angry with his father. A colossal hot dog fell from the sky right in front of him. He rushed it to his lab for examination, and soon realized that the food produced by the machine was growing larger, owing to an increase in pressure within the machine. At this rate, it had the potential to lead to a disaster for the city, if he were to use the food-making machine again. Flint was shocked when a portly man approached him. It turned out to be the town's mayor, who had been indulging in the excess of food. The mayor reminded Flint that tomorrow was the big day, and emphasized that the food must keep flowing. Flint, however, shared his concerns about the machine, and how it was causing the food to grow larger. The mayor attempted to manipulate him by suggesting that larger portions would benefit everyone. Reluctantly, Flint agreed to proceed with the mayor's plan, and activated the machine once again. The machine began siphoning and absorbing a substantial amount of water from the clouds. In the morning highly anticipated event began, and tourists from all over the world gathered to witness the magical city. The mayor welcomed the tourists and initiated the ceremony. Flint was getting ready to cut the ribbon and mark the beginning of the celebration. However, Sam detected unusual weather patterns approaching the city. She hurried to inform Flint about them. Flint, determined to maintain control, dismissed her concerns and told her to go home, brushing off her worries. Sam didn't agree, but he broke her heart, telling her she was just a weather woman and not a scientist. Flint entered the stage, and everyone began celebrating. The scissors were then taken from baby Brent and given to Flint and he cut the ribbon for the grand opening of the city. The entire town rejoiced in this celebration. However, suddenly, a powerful wind blew through the city, and in the distance, Flint saw a massive tornado made of spaghetti and meatballs ravaging the town. In his hurry, Flint rushed to his laboratory. There, he discovered the mayor, who was loading a multitude of food items into a machine and placing orders. Flint attempted to intervene, trying to prevent the gluttonous mayor from proceeding but the mayor adamantly refused and activated his orders. In an attempt to halt the orders, Flint entered the machine's kill code, but the mayor seized him and began choking him. Flint managed to break free from the mayor's grasp and hurried towards his computer. However, the mayor thwarted his efforts by hurling a massive onion at him, which destroyed the communication device. With communication severed, the machine continued its food preparation, and a dark storm began to brew around the city, intensifying the crisis. Sam and her video team began broadcasting the aggressive weather conditions, warning people about the impending food storm. The powerful food storm would impact the entire world, causing widespread devastation. After surviving the tornado, Tim searched for Flint but couldn't find him. He finally located him in the trash. Flint expressed his frustration feeling that his inventions always turned into problems, and his place was in this trash. His father, in an attempt to motivate him, reminded Flint of his genius, and handed him the lab suit his mother had given him as a child. With newfound confidence, Flint rushed to his lab and downloaded the kill code onto a USB flash drive. Using his flying car, Flint sped toward the city, 
However, when he arrived and tried to convince the townspeople that he had come to stop the impending danger, the town's mayor told the people it was his fault, and the people launched an attack on him. Fortunately, a police officer intervened, convincing the townspeople that Flint was trying to help, and that they must work together to solve the problem. The townspeople decided to build a boat to escape the island, and Sam, along with her cameraman Manny, joined Flint's mission to stop the machine from destroying the world. Baby Brent, who had lost his fame, also decided to come along to seek a renewed reputation. Together, they headed towards the food maker machine. As they approached the machine they were shocked to discover that it was now encased at the core of a colossal meatball. As they got closer, a living pizza launched attacks on them. They were astonished to realize that the machine had transformed food into sentient beings to protect itself from intruders. Amidst the chaos, they lost the flash drive containing the kill code leaving them without the means to shut down the machine. Flint found himself with no alternative but to reach out to his father and request that he send the kill code file from his computer to Flint's phone. His father readily agreed and, with the assistance of Manny, who was also a proficient pilot in his homeland, they successfully evaded the pizza attacks. They arrived at the peak of the meatball. Then, together, they jumped inside, leaving Manny and the monkey inside the car. After a safe landing, they began searching for a way to reach the machine. However, they encountered a barrier of fright oil that obstructed their path. Back in the city, Tim entered his son's lab, astounded by its advanced technology. Although he lacked expertise in understanding computer operations, he attempted to contact Flint. While Flint was amidst traversing a scorching sea of fright oil, Flint instructed him to access his files. But Tim was entirely unfamiliar with computer systems. Communication proved to be challenging. But with persistent effort, Tim eventually succeeded in transmitting the file to his son. As the team continued their journey through the meatball, they suddenly found themselves confronted by living roast chickens. Initially, they seemed friendly, so Baby Brent approached them. However, the roast chickens suddenly devouring Baby Brent alive. Sam and Flint were in shock, witnessing the gruesome scene. Nevertheless, Baby Brent managed to break free from their clutches and launched a counterattack against the hostile roast chickens. While he grappled with the enraged fowls, Sam and Flint made a desperate dash toward the machine. Meanwhile, in the city, a massive dam holding leftover food gave way, causing a catastrophic food avalanche. The townspeople, with the leadership of a police officer, managed to construct a boat made from sandwich ingredients, and successfully escaped the deluge of food. Tragically, the food flood utterly devastated the town. Furthermore, the expanding cloud dispersed across the globe, sowing chaos as it unleashed enormous quantities of oversized food, transforming every corner into a massive spectacle of disorder. News of this worldwide catastrophe quickly disseminated. In the meatball Sam and Flint arrived in a tunnel surrounded by sharp peanut brittle. Sam couldn't enter due to her severe peanut brittle allergy. Despite the risk, she lowered Flint down using a rope. However, during the process, a shard of brittle stabbed her triggering her allergies, but she refused to let Flint go. Flint expressed his love for her and cut the rope, plummeting down. Then, baby Brent carried Sam and jumped back to the plane. Inside, Manny administered her medication. Flint stealthily infiltrated the machine, but the machine detected his presence and launched an attack on him. Flint managed to evade the attack and connect the flash drive containing the kill code, but to his dismay, he discovered that Tim had accidentally sent him the wrong file. As the machine was on the verge of eliminating Flint, he swiftly deployed his spray on shoes to seal the machine's output. He then jumped from the meatball, causing the machine to malfunction and trigger an explosion. The massive cloud of food that had engulfed the world began to dissipate, vanishing into thin air. After landing safely, Flint's father was overcome with heartbreak upon learning that his son had sacrificed himself to protect the city. However, suddenly, Flint's voice rang out revealing that he had miraculously survived the explosion. With his loyal flying rat companions, Tim could finally express his profound gratitude to his son for his inventive heroism. Their heartfelt exchange was a poignant moment before Flint and Sam sealed their triumph with a kiss, igniting celebrations among everyone present.